Hi everyone, my name is Marta Mama. I'm your basic queer bitch, and I'm here to explain you all the references about Drag Race España season three. Tengo un jardín en mi casa que es la mar de re bonito. Okay, so first of all, I want to thank you guys so much because a lot of you sent me PayPal's last week. So thank you to Heidi, Davy, Elizabeth, Sydney, Erica, Ula, Angel, Jen, Tomek, Amanda. Uh, you guys are so amazing and so generous. It really, I don't know, I don't feel that I'm alone here anymore. Sometimes it's difficult because I'm just talking here to my phone, but you know, you, you guys make me feel like appreciated. So thank you so, so, so much. You know, if you want to support my channel, you have that information down below. I love you guys so much. So we're gonna talk about the references. Uh, we're not talking about all the nonsense and we're going to enjoy what is left of the season, okay? So Bestie just left and you know, they're talking and the funniest thing happened, um, Ornella shows that she had another reveal in case she went to the lip sync last episode, which is weird because she was my favorite last episode, but she opens her wig and she had a brain inside of her wig. Wow, I'm just, wow, I'm just, wow. Then the next day in the workroom, in Supreme's message, she is singing like a little song. It's like a little spicy little song. And it's called La Regadera. That comes from a specific type of musical theater that was very popular in Spain. It's called Revista. If you guys are familiar with the British panto, uh, this would be very similar. This is a song from 1907. And this style of like comedic musical theater that was for like, not for the highest class people, it was something popular for everyone. This was very, very popular in Spain. In the UK, this is still a tradition that has gone on for very long. But in Spain, it's basically only drag artists that keep this tradition alive. So I love that Ornella was the only one that knew what Supreme was singing. I love that they sang that. And I love all the references this season about La Revista. So we have a maxi challenge. This episode is super long maxi challenge. They have five minutes to get in drag. Shout out to Vania that looks basically the same. The other girls went to a more like comedic route, you know, the quick makeup thing. But Vania, like, come through. This challenge, so this is like a translation note. They have to fill their mouths with liquid and make each other laugh so they would spit all the liquid into the other person's face and they give each one of them a, a tortilla, what you guys understand this a tortilla. In Spain, tortilla is how we call our like Spanish tortilla, our Spanish omelet, an omelet with potatoes and onions sometimes. And uh, for us, these tortillas, we call them tortas or tortitas. And torta is the same word that we use to refer to like slapping someone that for us is giving a torta. So that's why they give them the tortillas. So the production wanted them to laugh and then spit out all the liquid in the other person's face, but it didn't work like that. Like most of them ended up throwing the liquid, like it looked like they were puking almost. So again, shout out to Ornella that understood what needed to be done and she spit all the liquid in Pitita's mouth. So as Supreme said, Ornella is like the moral winner of the mini challenge, but it was officially won by Pitita. We get to know that this week we're going to have the makeover and the people they are going to give the makeovers to are people that work in the cleaning industry. The name of the challenge and the name of the runway is Barricientas. That is a play on words with uh, how we call Cinderella. Cinderella in Spanish is 
Cenicienta, and they changed the ceniza part, which means ashes originally, they changed that to like sweeping. It's like sweeperella. So I think it was cute, you know, it's always cute to give voices to people, but I miss when the makeovers are about people from the LGBT community. I loved last year with like the old people. I think that we could have chosen a group, even though I like truly respect cleaners, like my drag mom works as a cleaner out of drag. And I think this is great, amazing and important. Sometimes the best thing about the makeovers are like the personal connections that people make. So uh, I don't know, I, I would have liked, I don't know, maybe bring people that clean Atres Media. Bring the people that clean the set, that clean for you. Uh, something that made it a little bit more personal. So they say that they have to make these looks from scratch and that they, Pitita, since she won the mini challenge, is the one in charge of giving, like making the teams. Valentina is this week's guest judge. I think that's amazing. She's like doing her promo, you know, she's going to be hosting Drag Race Mexico. My hopes are so high with Drag Race Mexico. Since they have the director that we had in season one and season two, plus Valentina, plus Lolita Banana, who I think is one of the most interesting artists that we've had in any franchise in a long time. I'm super excited for Drag Race Mexico. But Valentina does this walkthrough in the, in the workroom and, you know, she talks a little bit. She gives, like, very good advice. The funny part is when she meets Clover. As you know, Clover is a reviewer. She's been doing TikToks and YouTube videos about Drag Race for the longest time. And she's meeting her idol and her face, her expression was just, like, priceless. I don't know if you guys saw this, but Valentina gives an advice to Clover about how to position her feet when they're standing and dragging the runway. Did you see Clover in the runway? She's a fast learner. They talk about very interesting things in the workroom. Banya opens up about this time that she, she was beaten in the street just because she was in drag by four dudes. And it's terrible. I, I would have liked to know this about Vanya a little bit earlier in the season, maybe. But, you know, we just this week, we've had news of a brutal transphobic aggression in the metro in Barcelona here. And it's something that even though it looks like it's getting better, I think it's not getting better. It's getting more extreme. The people that support like trans rights and support queerness are louder, but the people that hate on it and that are strictly violent is also bigger than it was years ago. So we are living in a dangerous society, even though we have a lot of rights in theory here in Spain, but you know, it's getting more and more extreme, more violent and more difficult for a lot of people. I just love Vania. I think she's probably the most likable queen in this cast. The way that she speaks, she talks about that, but not with a big victim mentality. But she explains that now she goes to work in Metro by herself and that no one is going to make her feel afraid of who she is. And I don't know, she always gives like a positive attitude. Ornella talks about her relationship with her dad, who very sadly passed away. And she talks about a difficult relationship with her dad that had some homophobic views, but also loved them very much and how difficult it is to connect both feelings at the same time. Like what happened when Visa told her story about her dad passing away. This is obviously not the same, but I also like how vulnerable and honest because sometimes it's just easy to tell like the nice beautiful sobby part but emotions are more complex and families are very complex so I like that it was super honest and open and Kelly also talks about growing up queer and being basically bullied for who she was for deciding to go like skating and figure skating 
for not going in the gender roles that children are expected to go into, especially in Spain, where soccer is so, so, so big. So yeah, very cool, interesting conversations in the workroom this week. Let's go to the runways. The first couple is Pitita and Noah. Noah was the person that Pitita assigned to herself, had worked as a drag queen before. So she's comfortable with the high heels and with makeup and with the wig. And this look that she did, you know, I'm going to try not to focus too much on the judging. I think it was a nice gown. It was a lot worse than Pitita's, uh, but uh, she felt very happy and I'm happy for that. Makeup wise, wig wise, there's a lot of things that we could say. I needed some highlight in the chin so it didn't, Noah didn't look like this. I needed like better wigs maybe, but I understand that this construction was okay. I was expecting a lot more from Pitita this week. Like, I don't know, the silhouettes on point. I understand that she did well in general, but I was expecting to have like my mind blown this week by her. And it was okay, she looked amazing. Noah didn't look that amazing. Kelly Roller and Nelly Moeller, uh, they did this performance that was like stupid and everyone laughed. And honestly, I just live for Kelly Roller from now on. Like, she doesn't care. She's always so positive. She's always laughing, not taking anything too serious. She doesn't care. She has never been the biggest Drag Race fan. That's not where her drag is. And she didn't accommodate her drag to enter Drag Race. But the other way around. Maybe it's not up to the level that everyone is expecting from someone in Drag Race. But, you know, we live in a country where a drag queen is lucky if they pay her 50 euros for a gig. 50 euros is nothing, you guys, you know? Sometimes they do contests where the winner wins like 30 bucks. Or it is very, very, very severely underpaid here in Spain. So when we ask for polish and we ask for uh, fabric that looks very expensive and I don't know, for me it feels like there's a classism there and there's not understanding how the Spanish drag scene works. So she, Kelly Roller is a professional drag queen. She has been working for the longest time and maybe what she wears is not the most elevated thing, but her drag is not about what she wears. Ornella and Hortensia had these looks. They said that, uh, Ornella is usually a very, very good storyteller and that the storytelling this time in the runway didn't come through. They think it was because she was lacking confidence in herself. I don't know, maybe if she wasn't invisible for the judges and she could feel a little more, I don't know, she has done an amazing race and I understand that her, com her confidence wasn't super, super high this week, to be honest. Uh, sewing is not her forte, but I do think that they looked amazing. I think that uh, Hortensia looked like Ariel Rick, to be honest. But well, I understand the judging, it's okay. Like, I'm not gonna judge the judging. Clover and Curcuma. I thought it was super cute that Clover tried to incorporate Curcuma's story. Uh, Clover looked amazing, in my opinion. Her makeup was a little bit more harsh than other times. She had to put makeup on two people this week, and she's not that used to it, you know? But I think that her look looked amazing, that the other person's look, um, Kurkuma's look, was not that bad. She was holding, for some reason, she was holding the skirt, so you couldn't really see the dress and the figure and everything. The draping around here was too big for such a big frame, so it made it a little bit boxy, and we can go into all the technical things, but I do think that she made the other person shine. She was wearing pants. Clover was wearing pants. She was like the... Okay, so all of them, I didn't explain that, but it's of course supposed to be Cinderella, right? So all the contestants are supposed to be like fairy godmothers, and the people they're doing the makeover are supposed to be the princes. They're supposed to be Cinderella. And I think she made her princess look like a princess and she was looking more as a fairy godmother. 
But well, you know, the judging, I don't understand the judging. It's okay, it's okay, let's move on. She tried to do this story about toilet paper and trying to make it into something more glamorous and more fun. They just to say that the story didn't come through. It is true that the dress could have been better, but you know, she doesn't sew. I think it was difficult to dress someone like the person that she was assigned. Um, in general, I wasn't mad at all. Vanya and Nati Natillas, something that we've learned about Vanya is how generous she is with everyone. And I think she, like the two challenges that she has won, one she was working with Kelly Roller and another one she was working with this lady. So she is a team player. She knows how to work in drag. You know, it's not that easy sometimes, but she did an amazing job. She looked like a fairy godmother, like a dark fairy godmother. And the presentation was good. The dress was very nice. She deserved to win. Then they get to talk about themselves as kids. And in general, you know, if they ever tell you, like, what would you say yourself when you were three years old? Don't tell them sob stories. Don't tell them how difficult their lives are going to be. Don't tell them that they're going to be alone and depressed and they're going to unalight themselves. And don't tell them th those things. Tell them, you're awesome. You're so cool. I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. Tell them nice things. I always appreciate when they tell the kids the things that kids need to be told. You, they don't need spoilers about all the bad things that are going to happen with them. I kind of miss in the All Stars 2 when they give a speech and you know the one the famous one with Katya that's with the Russian accent and she says charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent what do all those things have in common i don't know like that one i miss like different styles of doing this specific thing but well it's okay so as i told you i don't want to be angry anymore so instead of talking about the things that make me angry i want to give like a couple minutes to talk about each one of the top five um, and why I think they are amazing. Clover. Clover has been, like, mistreated by the judges. I do think that they ask for more coming from her, and as a woman that does drag, it's all very triggering for a lot of people, you know? But, um, the judges may not see Clover, but we all see Clover. And I think she can be very, very proud of herself. It's not important if those four people see you. It's important that we all see you. We all see your talent and we all see how amazing you are. The audience is the people that is going to build your career. And I think most of the audience recognize that she has done a lot better than what the numbers say. If anyone had told Clover Bish one year ago that she was going to be on Drag Race and that she was going to be fifth, she would have freaking out. She has a lot of reasons to be very, very proud of herself. She is an amazing representation, not only of women that do drag, but of queens that work very hard and that have been doing drag for a short amount of time. Clover is a very hard worker and she's a very smart person. Fifth position has always been legendary. Remember that we have, I don't know, Ben de la Creme, Katia, Kokomon Trees, all of those were fifth position. I think that she deserved to be in the finale, but I am happy that the audience is able to see her like the judges were not able to see her this season. And if I had to choose as a person that does drag, I would choose the audience to see me. So I think that she is in fact a winner. And Bania, what to say about Bania? She has been working for, I don't know, 23, 25 years in drag. You have to respect a career like this one. Again, maybe she's not the most elevated with the looks, but in Spain, it feels weird when you guys talk about polish on TV. Because it's not fair to expect Spanish drag queens to be polished as they are in the United States. 
here drag is different we value other types of drag and here drag has evolved in a very different way for many many years so i understand that maybe you see her and maybe you're not wowed by her looks but her drag is not about her looks I think she's probably the most likable person this season and I think that it takes a lot of cojones to go on drag race after such a long career and in these like 25 years or something no one had ever seen Bania Vainilla out of drag so she's being vulnerable she's opening herself and now we get to know the person behind Bania Vainilla as well and I don't know I even if the looks are not amazing and the type of drag that she does may not be for me. I'm able to recognize that she is amazing at what she does and I just want to celebrate her and her career. And again, I think she is amazing and very likable. Pipita gets very emotional when they tell her she's a finalist and I thought it was super cute that she was so appreciative of the validation that she has been giving in Drag Race España. She feels validated, she feels seen for the first time in ever, you know, because she has always struggled with that. So I can really see that she was honestly feeling like validated for the first time. She's an amazing designer and she has given us amazing television this season. And Obviously, Pitita had to be in the top. We all know what's going to happen here, but um, I'm very happy for Pitita's validation. I think that if the season had gone in a different way, she would have a lot more supporters, supporters that she deserves. Does she deserve everything that she has had this season? Well, her work, she has worked. Would I have taken the same decisions? Probably not. But it's not my decision to make. So remember that she's not guilty in, of anything and don't be mean to Pitita. Kelly Roller, um, you know, Kelly Roller is going to serve questionable looks and she's just going to be the happy, positive, like little slutty comedy queen in roller skates. And that's who she is and that who that's who she has always been. And I really, yeah, it also takes a lot of cojones to go, cojones, I say it with like an American accent. It also takes a lot of cojones to go to drag race and not change your drag in order to go to a competition. I understand that she is not the one that has been drag racing the best. And I understand that I'm not a particular fan of her type of drag because I don't think that she's used to have audiences like me personally like I think she works for, for other types of people that are not like me but again I'm able to recognize that even if it's not my style of drag that she has a huge career she's one of the hardest working drag queens in the industry and maybe she's not the best at drag racing but I think that she has a career that deserves to be celebrated and Ornella Gongora to be honest, Ornella Gongora was one of the biggest discoveries for me personally and for my liking. She was the one that I found more interesting this season. Of course, Paquita as well and other people, but I already knew of their work a little bit more. Um, Ornella, I found to be the one that tickles my fancy the most. Like, I love her interpretation of drag her references, her execution, her performative talent. I am like, I'm going to be a fan of Ornella basically forever. And it is a shame that the judges weren't able to see her. But again, we all see her, right? The winner of the challenge is Vania Vainilla. Very well deserved. And in the bottom, we have Clover and Ornella. Last episode, I said I was Team Clover and Team Ornella, so obviously this was going to be the bottom two. They lip sync to Vas a Volverme Loca by Natalia, and I don't know, I felt that this lip sync was a little bit weird, like the way it was edited in general. There was a lot of problems with record, like things, I don't know, I felt like it was edited in a weird way. In some of the times where you see Clover lip syncing, it looks like she is lip syncing to a different part of the song that is not the one that is playing. It feels like they edited 
the whole, the thing in a whole different way. But well, since we're talking about the references, shout out to Ornella for because when Clover Bish did the split, she did this. So the sound of the suction cup for, you know, her lady parts on the floor. I thought that was hilarious. In general, it was like edited in a very messy way. I don't know who I would have picked to win this lip sync. I love them both. I do think that they both deserve to be in the finale. And uh, yeah, a, a lot of love for both of them. I do understand how both of them were feeling. They both felt kind of angry. Like Ornella afterwards, she come to social media and explain that what she said in the intact about Los Javis, that she wasn't being fair. And it's something that she was feeling like insecurities in herself, that there's no problem with Los Javis and whatever. But I do understand that you feel not seen. And one of the most difficult things being an artist is feeling like not seen, like no one is understanding, appreciating and getting you, you know? So Ornella is in the top four. I'm very happy for her. Clover is not, she deserved to. I am very sad, like no matter what happened, that was going to be sad. And now that this was the semi-final and we only have the reunion and the finale left, uh, the impressions that I have from this season, now that it has basically ended, is that, I don't know, probably with the change, you know, that they changed the direction people this season. And I don't know if it was from them or if it was from the judges. Probably they sat down and they thought about the other two seasons and they thought it like what is lacking in Drag Race España from the past two seasons? And someone probably said polish and probably, I don't know, like the runways or something. Like they, I think that they wanted to elevate the concept that we had in Drag Race España, basing it on the comparison with Drag Race US probably. And they wanted to make it more elevated in Drag Race US terms but they didn't understand that what really made Drag Race España different was the fact that we don't, we didn't go on the same things that Drag Race US did. Here it has always been about honest artists doing honest art. And this season, it didn't seem to be about that. And you know, that's why I'm sad. I think that probably the girls are not having the best time right now i'm worried about their mental health and i'm worried about their careers afterwards and i'm worried about a lot of stuff stop blaming everybody if there's not a fourth season we have seen this happen in many other franchises i do think that they wanted to improve the España seasons, I just think that they were too disconnected with the real drag scene in Spain to understand and appreciate what we had with Drag Race España in season one and season two. So even though I guess that the intentions of the people that are behind Drag Race España are, were good, uh, we have lost, uh, unfortunately, what we loved about Drag Race España in the previous two seasons. But we still have amazing talent, we still have amazing artists, and it's not about what the judges see, it's about what we see. So that's all for today. Remember that you have my social media and my PayPal account in case you want to support my channel. You can also go watch my sister reviewers. Uh, Parody Paradise talks about fashion in Spanish. Emily Goes talks about makeup in Spanish. And Maddie Rance, if he's still doing reviews, <laughs> talks about the season in English. And he rants as he should. So that's all for today. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. It really means a lot. Thank you. Love you.